Star Wars 7x7 episode 2903. So I'm really excited because we're going to do something today that we've only done with movies and we haven't done with the live action series on Disney+. Plus. It's a Jedi business episode where we're going to talk about how some ratings actually matter and some ratings eh, not so much. Punch it! <laughs> Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy. And thank you so much for joining me for it. Alright, so first of all, before we get into it, I do just want to give a quick shout out to somebody on Apple Podcasts who left a wonderful review. It's SW Fan Since 1976. That's a, a great, fun little username for that. I appreciate that. The mini headline for the review is so very consistent, and they said, I love that this is a daily podcast, and I appreciate the consistent reporting and fun content. Thank you, and I just want to say thank you for that very kind review. I really appreciate it, and if you're listening and you haven't left a review yet, that's okay. I hope you'll consider doing it wherever you like to catch the podcast. Please do. It helps me from the standpoint of moral support. I mean, you know, nearly eight years, like I'll take all the moral support I can get for this. And also it does help more people potentially find Star Wars 7x7 and have the opportunity to add this bit of Star Wars joy into their daily lives. So I hope you'll consider leaving a review if you haven't yet already. And if you have, well, then we're probably going to be talking about it later in this series as we continue on our countdown to episode 3000. Just 97 episodes left after this one. Wow. All right. So I have a feeling you can probably relate to this. I have an uncle who is a wonderful guy and doesn't necessarily care about Star Wars one way or the other, but he finds out, of course, that I'm into Star Wars just a little bit, right? <laughs> and so now he's sending me every Star Wars story that he sees online, right? Like you have somebody who's probably doing that in your life, I imagine then he doesn't have any skin in this game at all. So he's just sending me whatever he sees. And one of the things that he sent me was one of those articles. <laughs> it's one of those where it says that the ratings for Obi-Wan Kenobi are crashing. And I'm like, oh boy, this is interesting. And normally I just kind of blow by this stuff. And, you know, I saw the website and I was like, yeah, I'm familiar with that website. And then, nah, and I don't want to bother. But, you know, I just was like, all right, let's look at it. And it turned out that it wasn't talking talking about the ratings in terms of like, you know, Nielsen ratings, like actual number of viewers or anything. It was talking about the IMDB reviews from random people on the internet. Now, separately, I've seen things saying that review bombing is happening and I haven't really looked into that, so I can't say for sure. I just know that there apparently is, you know, some drop in the, you know, out of score out of 10 on the IMDb rankings from general audience reviews and that people are complaining about it. Not coincidentally, I'm sure. <laughs> There's something going on with Moses Ingram and horrible things that she's been receiving via social media and that sort of thing, right? Like, ugh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure those two things are not related at all. And sarcasm. But seeing a thing saying that Obi-Wan's tanking in ratings and then finding out that it wasn't really about ratings exactly made me wonder, well, what's going on with ratings? And there are streaming ratings for whether it's Disney Plus or Netflix or Hulu Plus or any other service, Paramount Plus, you know, you name it. Like, there are actually streaming services that are getting rated via Nielsen, the people who have been doing, you know, TV ratings, audience ratings for, you know, decades upon decades. And I guess they're figuring out how to do the streaming service rating thing as well. So there's a little bit of information available, but not nearly as much as you would hope for it just yet. Basically, they are a couple of weeks behind in what they report to the general public. So for example, Variety just published what was the most recent report of streaming ratings and viewership and whatnot, but that report was for the week from May 9th to May 15th. And Variety is just reporting on this because it was just released uh, earlier this week, right? So we're not quite a month behind, but pretty close to being a month behind actually getting these numbers, which means that a full and current accounting for the Obi-Wan Kenobi series is not yet available. And yet, and yet. The Nielsen website did an article as a sort of special report thing 
because the Obi-Wan Kenobi series debuted on the same day that season four of Stranger Things debuted. And so they thought, wow, like this is, you know, the big blockbuster, like one versus the other thing. We got to look and see how they did. And I got to say, it's not really an apples to apples comparison because of course the Obi-Wan Kenobi series only released two episodes. Stranger Things released its entire season, but the way that the Nielsen situation works, they're only looking at you know, total minutes viewed, for example. And so when you have four seasons of Stranger Things content, that's so many more episodes than what the Obi-Wan Kenobi series comes out with. So yes, yeah, Stranger Things is going to wall up the Obi-Wan Kenobi series in terms of minutes viewed, but that's not really an apples to apples comparison. So you can't say that Obi-Wan's a failure because the viewers were, you know, the viewing minutes were much less than what Stranger Things got. What Nielsen was able to say, however, which is absolutely stunning and remarkable and awesome is that the Obi-Wan Kenobi series for the week that it debuted it's only the third week in Disney Plus's history where they had a show that exceeded 1 billion minutes of viewing time the only other two times that happened were with the Loki series where in the fifth week of its run it surpassed a billion minutes viewed and then in the sixth week of its run the finale week it also surpassed a billion minutes viewed during those two particular weeks but they had five episodes and six episodes that could be watched during that time period. Again, the Obi-Wan Kenobi series only had two episodes available, and yet it was able to surpass a billion minutes viewed in the space of one week. So out of the gate, based on this special report, it seems like the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, and again, this is coming from Nielsen, this is not coming from Disney Plus or from Lucasfilm, so this is third-party independent stuff. It looks like the Obi-Wan Kenobi series out of the gate is the most successful live-action series, whether it's Star Wars or Marvel, that's been released by Disney Plus ever. So, of course, the question then becomes, what's going to happen when we get the numbers for the rest of the weeks of the series? Are we going to see a drop, or is it going to stay consistent throughout? So just for fun, I decided to look at what happened with The Book of Boba Fett because it had a seven episode run, obviously. And so the numbers for that, and I'm just saying where it was ranking in the top 20, which doesn't necessarily account for the fact that, you know, a number of different series were also released in and around the same time. And a lot of those series had many more episodes than The Book of Boba Fett did, obviously. But in the top 20 in terms of actual minutes viewed, Book of Boba Fett was number 17 in its first week, number 10 in its second week, 13th in its third week, 10th in its fourth week, jumped up to number four in its fifth week. I wonder if that has to do with a certain other Mandalorian. <laughs> and then number eight in its sixth week, number six in its finale week, and then it dropped to number 17 the week after it completed, and then from there it was gone out of the top 20. Now, this seems to be the way that it goes with a lot of limited run series kinds of things because people have gone through and watched them all and then they've moved on to something else because they're feeding that content machine on every single streaming platform. And just to reinforce that idea, the only other series that had a billion minutes viewed week, which was the Loki series, the week after it concluded, it still showed up in the top 20, but the second week, gone for the top 20. So the other most successful series in Disney Plus's history was gone from the top 20 in the Nielsen streaming rankings within two weeks of its release, of its conclusion, I should say. The upshot of all this is that we're probably not going to know the full picture of Obi-Wan Kenobi's success or failure or you know, somewhere in between until the end of July, because by that point, we will have had a couple of weeks of Nielsen rankings released that go beyond the conclusion of the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. So we'll really get to see just how successful the series really was. And it looks like we're going to have to go with Minutes View, which is, of course, you know, a challenging metric too, because that's dependent on the actual length of the episodes as well. Yeah, but we can't really go by a subscriber situation, particularly in this case, because the Ms. Marvel series is overlapping for half of the length of the Kenobi series, so June 8th, 15th, and 22nd, right? I mean, not technically, of course, because Kenobi released two episodes at once, but you get what I mean, right? So you can't necessarily attribute 
subscriber editions unless you're doing survey work uh, for these three weeks to either Obi-Wan or Ms. Marvel because they're both together, right? So it's only really that first couple of weeks when Obi-Wan had it all to itself that you can say for sure whether that was the case. We're not going to get a clean number out of subscriber ads as a measure of success. It's really going to come down to minutes viewed and we've still got another month and a half to wait before the you know, final results are in in that regard. So between now and the end of July, if you see things that say that Obi-Wan Kenobi ratings are tanking, well, probably best to take that with a really big grain of salt, right? Like, you know, enormous. <laughs> that is what I have for you on this first ever Jedi business episode related to streaming of live action TV shows for Star Wars. And that is going to do it for this episode of the podcast. And I will add one thing. If you enjoy consistent content that's coming here, for you every single day since July 7th, 2014. I hope you consider joining the community at patreon.com slash SW7X7 and supporting me keeping the lights on, <laughs> the ring lights lit, and oh, you can't even see it, the Millennium Falcon in the background here. And if you're catching the audio version, you can't. <laughs> You're not seeing that either, but you know what I mean. I would really appreciate the support. Again, that's patreon.com slash SW7X7. And it just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for this episode as always, and may the Force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars-related items, are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited, other respective trademark and copyright holders, may the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.